Postgres is probably the most, or at least one of the most popular SQL databases in the world. And with Cloudflare Workers, you can build really easy integrations with either a new or your existing Postgres databases and make use of SQL directly inside of your serverless functions. In this tutorial, we'll use Postgres, which is an open source web server that allows you to make REST connections directly to your Postgres database. And by doing so, we can make use of simple JavaScript primitives in order to access our Postgres database, much as if we were using some sort of database as a service. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to set up both a working Postgres database with a Postgres endpoint that you can access via Cloudflare D, which is our Cloudflare tunnel product. Once you have a tunnel set up, we'll use the Postgres worker example, which is available here on GitHub, and I'll link to it in the description of the video, to actually access our Postgres database directly inside of JavaScript. There's also a text version of this tutorial, which I'll link to in the video description as well. Now to get started, you're going to need a running Postgres instance. And if you don't have one already, we have a GitHub project here that I'll link in the description. It's called Cloudflare slash Postgres, Postgres Cloudflare D example which is a simple Docker Compose setup that you can use to get up and running with a Postgres database, the Postgres endpoint, and then expose that endpoint to the internet using Cloudflare D. So to get started, I'm just gonna copy this git URL here, and then inside of my editor, I'll just run in the terminal a quick git clone. Once I'm in this directory, I can run Docker Compose and get this up and running by using the up sub command. Docker Compose will set up all the necessary network, volume, and containers. And once it's up and running, you'll see a bunch of logs coming out here. The first of which is gonna be Postgres, so making sure that Postgres runs correctly, as well as the Postgres endpoint, which is going to be the actual endpoint we use to connect to our Postgres database. And finally, the Cloudflare D tunnel. So if you haven't used Cloudflare Tunnel before, it's a way to securely access resources on your local server or whatever else you might be running via a free Cloudflare URL. So in this case, makeup-eyes-end-facts.trycloudflare.com. Of course, yours will be different, and you can also pass an optional configuration file if you want to make this available at a permanent URL. Now, if I open up this URL in the browser, you can see that it returns some JSON back here from the Postgres API. So we'll make use of this to build a full-on application that interfaces with this JSON API and allows us to both query and create data in our Postgres database. Now, by default, we've set up a Postgres database that has no data inside of it. So we might wanna make sure that there's some real data in there that we can interface with. And to do that, I've provided a little command here that you can copy and paste which will run the SQL file here, create example data.sql, and create a user table and a single user with the name Christian. So back in my editor, I'm just gonna open up a new window here and I'm gonna paste this in. And you can see when it's completed, it's created a table and then inserted one row into that table. Now, if I come back here, I can make sure that this works by just going to slash users, which is the API endpoint for retrieving things out of my users table. And you can see that there's an ID and a name of Christian. So I've successfully added data to my Postgres database and I can query it using the simple URL structure here for the Postgres integration. The last thing you need to know about Postgres is that you can use query parameters to actually query the data inside of your application. So I'll add a query parameter to the end of the slash users endpoint and I'll say ID equals, and here I'll put a little statement to indicate what this ID should be equal to. So I'll use the equal operator and set the value to one. And you can see that it actually returns the same response here, but what it's doing is filtering out any users that don't have an ID equal to one. So of course, let's change this to two and you can see that it returns an empty array. So we successfully learned how to query and filter things out of our Postgres endpoint. Now, when it comes time to working with this inside of a Cloudflare worker serverless function, we have an existing template that you can make use of if you wanna just get up and running and start building your application quickly. And under the hood, this uses an awesome tool called Postgres.js, which is an open source project from the Supabase team that creates a isomorphic JavaScript client for Postgres. What this means is you get an ORM-like interface for working with Postgres inside of your applications. You can do things like select from tables, pass in parameters that you want, filter using the filter section, everything you need to do when it comes to loading data from your Postgres database using a straightforward and expressive API for modifying and querying your data. So back in our editor, I'm going to make a new project using Wrangler Generate, and I'm just gonna call it Postgres Example Worker and then I will open it inside of my editor. Now inside of my project, I'm just gonna paste in this account ID real quick so I can successfully publish this project. 
And I also want to change the type here to Webpack because I'm going to be installing dependencies such as Postgres.js. Now here in the editor, I'll just install the Postgres package by saying npm install at supabase slash Postgres.js. Inside of my index.js, I'll just import this package real quick by saying import Postgres client from at supabase slash Postgres JS. I'll also clean up this code a little bit so that we can understand what's going on a little bit better. And now inside of my handle request function, which is the main function that's called every time our serverless function runs, I need to set up a new Postgres client. To do this, I can just say const client equals new Postgres client and then pass in a URL. Now this URL is going to be the Cloudflare tunnel URL that we set up earlier. In my case, this is makeupeyesandfacts.trycloudflare.com. If you're using a configuration file for your Cloudflare D setup, you may have a permanent URL, for instance, if you put it on some sort of API endpoint or something like that. Though for our experiments, this will work just fine. It's worth noting that in the Cloudflare Postgres worker example that we have on GitHub, we configure this Postgres endpoint via a secret, and you probably should too. That way the code doesn't just have a raw URL embedded inside of the code and instead it's an encrypted variable that gets passed in when the function runs. But just for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll just paste in the URL directly. Now to do that, I'll just say const client equals new Postgres client and then paste in this URL. And now I have access to this client variable that I can use to make requests. Now to get started, let's just do a basic select query, which you can see here. We just say postgres.from and then the name of the table. So in this case, they use cities. And then select here will be what actually selects the data from this table. And this is an asynchronous function, so we'll do a wait on this. And then we get back an object that has data and error inside of it. So in our code, we'll just say const data. We won't worry about the error for now, though of course you'll want to build error handling into your project at a later date. And let's just say await client client dot from and in this case we're going to pass a table this will be our users table and then we'll say select to get all of the data from the rows in that table so this data will be an array of users so let's change the response here to stringify that data and it will just be a json array so before we're ready to publish this we just need to make one more change which is handling an issue with the supabase postgres.js client and how it builds on cloudflare workers and so if I come here to the sidebar and I make a new file called webpack.config.js, I can paste in some configuration here that will overwrite how the supabase.js client uses fetch and patch it with the built-in fetch that we have provided in the Cloudflare Workers runtime. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, again, note that there is an open source template here at Cloudflare slash Postgres worker example that has all of this set up for you. And you can see, in fact, the code I just pasted is exactly from this file here. So once you set up this custom webpack config, we can come into Wrangler Toml and just make sure that we use that here by providing the webpack config and set that to webpack.config.js. Now, if we run Wrangler Publish, we can publish our project for the first time, and it'll just take a couple seconds, and once it's done, we'll be able to see our API response in browser. So let's control click this and open it up, and you can see that it returns ID one, name Christian. So this is making requests to our Postgres endpoint from inside of a Cloudflare workers function. Now that we've built the basics of this application, let's install a router and actually build a version of this application that uses routing to access different parts of our data inside of our Postgres database. Let's open up the terminal and run npm install iddy router, which is a very simple router JavaScript package that's been created by a member of our community that makes it really easy to build routing into our Cloudflare workers applications. So to start, let's import the router from iddy router here, and we'll set up a new router by saying const router equals the router function. Now with this router variable, what we can do is add paths or routes to our application, which the router will handle as part of the serverless function being called. So as an example, we can say router.get and then pass in a path here like slash users and then a corresponding function, which is what will actually be called when that path is matched. Now, when we hit the slash users path, we want to get all of the users inside of our application and we want to render them as JSON back to the user. And that's exactly what we do in the code that we wrote earlier. So let's take this and we're just going to paste it inside of this route. Now, of course, this refers to a client variable, which we could obviously paste in there as well. But we know we're probably going to use that client in a couple different places. 
So let's just move it up here to the top and make it available as a variable that all of these different routes can make use of. So with our first route set up, we then need to tell our application to pass off any sort of request to this router. And we can do that by coming into handle request here and just say return router.handle and then pass in the request here to um, tell the router what to actually look for, what to actually look at when it comes time to routing requests to the correct path. Now that we have a specific path set up here slash users, you'll note that of course this path we set up in the past, which is just this route that we are testing on, is no longer going to work. And so we should have some sort of catch all which says if we don't know about the path that the user is trying to hit, return some sort of response back. We can do that by using the router.all function and then passing in a path here. I'll just use star to say any path that hasn't been matched. And then we're just going to return back a function here, which is just a new response with a string not found, as well as a status of 404. So this will say any path that we haven't seen or that we don't recognize, just return a response back here, which is a 404. Now we can publish our project again. Now if we come back here, we can see if I refresh the page here, I get this not found, meaning this is a path that we don't recognize. And if we go to slash users, we get that same users path that we had set up previously in our code. So we now have routing in our application, which we can make use of to do more complicated behavior in our application. So our slash users path gets all of the users for application. And next, what we want to do is build another path that will allow us to specifically get data for a single user. So to do this, we can add another get path here that is slash users slash and then the ID parameter, which we can indicate by saying colon ID. Now, this will be a function that has arguments that we'll want to make use of inside of that function. And this will be a request argument here. And using destructuring, we can get the params out of it, which will be all of the parameters for this function. For instance, we can get the ID parameter directly out of that params object and make use of it to load data from our Postgres database. Now, in order to do that, we'll do another request, which is much like the one we did in the past. We'll just say const data equals await client dot from users. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to drop down to the next line here and say select. Again, I want to select everything from those rows in the users table. But I also want to add an additional thing here that says just get users that match this specific ID. And to do that, I'll say dot equals and then the key or column, which is going to be ID and then the value for that, which is just going to be this ID variable that comes from our params. And what this means is that we'll get specifically a set of users that just match this criteria, which is going to be that ID is set to ID. Now with that set up, we're going to get a data array back. And what we want to do here is make sure that there is something inside of that array and set it to user if it exists. Now the way we'll do that is I'll make a new variable called user. And I'll say if there is a data dot length that is greater than zero, return data zero, which is the first thing inside of that array, else return null. So this is a ternary statement that says if this data array has length, just return the first thing inside of that array, otherwise return null. So this user variable will be what we actually return as a response. We'll say return new response, json.stringify, passing in the user here, as well as headers, which will be set to content type application slash JSON. So this will be a new response that has a user key inside of it, which will either be the user that we get back here from our Postgres database, or if there is no user found for that ID, it'll just be null. So let's open up our terminal. We'll run Wrangler publish. And so now if we come back here, we can refresh. Of course, our slash users route hasn't changed at all. But if we go to slash users slash one, which is our ID for our first user, we get a JSON object back here that says user with ID of one name of Christian. And if we put in a different ID, for instance, slash users slash 99, we get a user of null because this user does not exist. So we've now built param based lookups for our data using both a router and Postgres.js's really expressive API. Now for our final route here, we want to actually allow users to add user information to our database. So up until now, we've just been querying data. So how do we make it so that we can actually submit data to this API endpoint? So to do that, we're going to make another route. It's going to be a post and it's going to be to slash users. 
And again, we'll make an async function here, but for the function argument, we'll want to capture the entire request, which is what's being passed into this function. Now with that request, we're going to get the data that's being sent to the serverless function. And so we'll make that available as user data. And we're going to want to accept JSON. So let's say await request.json, which is a function that parses the JSON body that's coming in as part of the request into a JavaScript object. Now with that user data, we can actually submit it to the Postgres endpoint using the insert call. So we'll say const data, and then we'll say await client from users, and then we'll say insert, which is going to take an array of values. So you can use this to insert as many users at a time as you want, though for us, we're just going to have a single user. So I'll just say user data. And so this is an array with a single thing inside of it, which is the user data JSON body coming inside of the request. And once that's completed, it'll return this data back. So this data that will come back will represent the new user. So let's say return new response json.stringify and this will be a user which will set to data that's going to be the data coming back from our postgres api and then we'll also once again pass in headers here and i'll just copy this content type application slash json so it will be a json response that comes back from our client and one last wrangler publish here and of course, if I come back here and I look at this endpoint, you won't be able to test this in browser because you can't make post requests here. But if I look at the structure here, I know that I could probably post a name value here, which will be, you know, the new name of my user. And I know that the URL here is going to be slash users. So let's grab this entire URL. And then in the terminal, I'm going to make a new curl request. So I'll say curl, and then I'll use the X post, which will set a post request. And then the data here is going to be a JSON string. So I'm just going to give it a name of user two, and then I'm going to give it the URL, which is just going to be Postgres example worker dot signal nerve dot workers dot dev slash users. And then finally, I'm just going to take that output and I'm going to run it into JQ, which is a command line tool for parsing and displaying JSON formats. And so if I press enter here, you can see I now get a response back here, which is a JSON object with a user. And inside of that, you can actually see that it's an array. So we actually should look at the response that's coming back because like everything else, it returns an array, not an object. So we'll fix that here in just a sec, but you can see that the ID is set to two. This is our second user and the name is user two. So if we come back here and we refresh, users one is still the same, but users two is now our new user. And in the same way, slash users now returns two users inside of our array. So we can make use of all of the same filtering and things like that as our database grows with more users. Now, real quick, let's fix up that array that's coming back here from the post. So we're going to come up here and grab the same const user functionality. And we're going to look if this data array that comes back has a length. Let's set user to the first thing inside of that array. Otherwise it will be null. And then we can clean up this code a little bit and just say JSON stringify user. So now when we post a new user here, we'll get an object back as part of this JSON response. It won't be an array. So in this tutorial, you've learned how to deploy a serverless API for interacting with a Postgres database via Postgres and Cloudflare tunnel. If you want to take this project and deploy it to production, you can use things like Cloudflare Tunnel to set up permanent tunnel URLs to your production Postgres databases. And you can make use of things like Postgres as a service SaaSs and tools to deploy your Postgres database to production and build features on top of it in the serverless world without relying on backends as a service or paying a ton of money to get the kind of API integrations in your JavaScript projects that a lot of newer modern database as a service tools provide. So this is a great solution for people who already have existing Postgres databases and want to build on top of them, or want to avoid vendor lock-in with tools that require you to buy fully into the ecosystem and not control your own data. So again, I'll put a link to all of the things you need to know, the open source projects, the tutorial in our Cloudflare documentation, as well as the blog post talking a little bit about why this project is interesting and exciting in the video description. Thanks and see you in the next video.